What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 21 of The Rise of a Nation here with FC Edmonton in the Canadian Premier League Championship Playoff. Yes, it is the end of Season 3. I have to beat Halifax this year. After last year where we lost to them at this stage, it, it we, I can't even fathom a world in which we lose this. Uh, yeah, today we're taking on Halifax. We kind of knew that at the end of last episode, just as a refresher. End of first season, the playoffs was ourselves versus Halifax. We won the first leg 6-3, then lost the second leg 2-0 to win 6-5 on aggregate. Last year, we suffered heartbreak. We lost 4-1 in the first leg, despite a decent response and a 3-1 win in the second. It just wasn't enough, was it? And well, for the third year in a row, we meet our big rivals here on the big stage. You can see, since you were last here, we have played four matches, the first of which... A 3-0 defeat against Halifax. Yes, really not ideal for this one. It was, to be honest, just a poor showing all round. Michael Cox grabbed a brace. Juan Diego Gutierrez with a goal for them as well, the second of the game. And it was a hard-fought game, which ultimately saw us come out second best. And, uh, well, it, hopefully this doesn't bode badly for what is to come today. I'm hoping that we can put this to the back of our mind, kind of look at the results we've got against them in the league this year, where we've won 6-1, we've beaten them 3-0 ourselves. And, well, you can see here, following on from that 3-0 defeat, we did bounce back. Uh, a week later, we had the exact same fixture again against Halifax, this time Amiobi with the solitary goal to get us the win. It was a bit of a scrappy goal, a rebound that he scored. Amiobi and Sarkaria starting with Daly and a duck on international duty. Uh, but yes, a good little result there. And following on from that, we got a draw against Forge. Our form, to be honest, to end the year really hasn't been that great. They took the lead in this game and uh, well, they led right the way through until the 90th minute where Carlos Mora, the man of the moment, the big man on campus, the head honcho, he turned up big. A long-range effort that kind of squeezed in at the far post. Not a bad way to, well, I guess, share a share of the spoils there. Unfortunately, our next game against Cavalry was a 2-1 defeat to end the year. They took a two-goal lead in this game. Hamilton did get a consolation back for us, but it was not enough. And, uh, well, I want to issue a public apology to the fans because this year, in five fixtures against Cavalry, we won one, drew one, and lost three. And this was one of those three defeats, but... I did kind of have one eye ahead to today's games, um, which, of course, are going to be the two legs here against Halifax. Now, we did have a youth intake happen since you were last here. It was not as good as the previous years. It was always going to be a struggle. Um, a few players worth talking about, though. Chris Daniels here looks like a very, very good young Canadian right midfielder. Very athletic, great determination. As a winger, he has a hell of a lot to like in his game. And while we're here, we'll just set up his training real quick. We're just going to put him on winger, I think. Not a great deal more to add to him, really. Maybe his finishing could be a tiny bit better. So, um, you know what? We'll put him on shooting training as well there. Uh, there was uh, two other players who I ended up signing from this intake. I'm trying to remember the players' names now. There was this guy, Andrea Marino. Looks like, to be honest, a very good little centre-back. Naturally fit, very good mentals for his age. 16 years young. Bit of a mercenary personality. Don't know how I feel about that, but hopefully that's not going to prove to be too problematic. And we did also sign a goalkeeper, or at least we're in the process of signing a goalkeeper. Or we should have been in the pro... I, I was meant to offer this guy a contract. Steve Lewis was the only other player of our intake who I'm going to consider taking on. You can see here the players highlighted in green were the players from our intake this year. So besides the players that we've talked about... Just lacking a little bit in the quality department, but let's be honest, after last year's intake, which was a once-in-a-generation intake with players like Kevin Lewis, it was always going to be a struggle. You can see here Lewis has played 10 games in the league this year as our goalkeeper. I think next year he really is going to be challenging Connor James for that number one spot. Connor, he's going to have to be at his very best, I feel like, to give um, Williams a just a run for his money in that goalkeeping department. But anyway, the good news is coming into today's game, we have had a few players out with injuries, but for the most part, they have recovered and recovered well. Um, Duck is still struggling just a little bit with match fitness, so he's going to start the, on the bench for us today. But the rest of our team should look fairly familiar. Why is uh, Soria not 
There, he should be there. I must have misclicked him off. In goal, we're going to go with Connor James. Apare is going to play at left centre-back for us. Recently turned 31 years old, but still very, very good for us. Right centre-back, we're going to go with Liam Fraser, of course, a player joining us permanently uh, in the off-season. Very, very excited about that. To his left, we have Ramon Soria. The midfield trio in the centre, we're going to go with Shandell Senior, who this year has been just top draw for us. Ahead of him, we're going to have Marshall and Mora alongside one another. Marshall is a bit of an unsung hero, I feel like. He's the player who always does the pass that leads to the goal. You know, it's the pass before the assist. If secondary assists were a thing in football, he'd be all over those. Alongside him today, we're going to go with Mora. Um, with Duck not starting today's game, it opens up a foreign player spot. Carlos Mora is just the no-brainer option to bring in there. He has been, for me, my player of the year this season. Out on the left, we're going to go with Lovett. He's been okay. Maybe he can turn up in the big occasion and show us what he's all about. Similarly, out on the right-hand side, Ruiz. He's put in really good average ratings, but hasn't contributed quite as much as I would like to see from a player who is, by a big margin, I think our best player, but also our highest earning player. The good news is he's continuing to improve, and I'm hoping that today he's going to turn up on the big stage for us. Then up top, we are going to go with Daly, of course, as our pressing forward. And to his left, we're going to go with Hamilton, who did get a goal against Cavalry in our most recent game as the advanced forward in the system. On the bench, plenty of options here. We've got Duck, Edwini Bonsu, Deshaies, Kay, Telfer, Chung, Moses. These are big names. And, uh, well, besides Mosavat, who unfortunately is out injured with a sports hernia, we pretty much have free reign to pick the team that we want to play. And this is the team that I want to go with today. So, let's get into the first leg. We are at home for it. We um, really want to just get things off to a flyer here. It's never going to be easy. We know what to expect from Halifax. We know on our day we can beat them comfortably. But equally, there has been times again and again where they've come up and been a thorn in our side. I want the players to remember that game last time we met them at this stage in the competition. I want us to trounce them in the first leg. Let me relax and enjoy the second leg. And, uh, well, let's see how we get on here. Um, some people might see it as being a little bit naive for me not to be playing with wing-backs. We've experienced it again and again. The, the wide attacking players at Halifax do cause our free at the back problems. But as we saw in wins, you know, 3-0 and 6-1 against Halifax, we can tear them apart in our day. And while Mora marauds through the middle, that is why he is my man of the moment. Marshall with a, an unusual and a kind of a rare assist, really. But Carlos Mora... He just goes maraudering through the middle, quickly becoming a fan favourite, I feel like, the number 14. Makes this darting run on ahead, finds a gap, ploughs straight through it, gets such a strong effort away. Oxner got down and got a hand to it, but it was not enough. That is the start we wanted here. Our first shot of this two-legged affair finds the back of the net, and now we're going to want to build off that. So far, besides that goal, it's been a pretty even game, you can see here. Um, the shots are, oh, there's only one apiece. It's been bogged down in the midfield, although Lovitz has won it high up the pitch here. Threads it through to Marshall. Already one assist to his name. What can he do, the young Jamaican? He breaks through. Moore is there again. Fouled in the area. No, but Marshall, what a finish. Oh my gosh. I mean, if there was a time to turn up big, Marshall, this was that game. What a goal for him. Mora involved in the build-up play. Marshall now with a goal to go with his assist. He started things off with the drive and run. Mora crunched by three players. It's like they knew the danger that he possessed. The ball fell quite kindly to Marshall, but he lashed it home into the top corner. Absolutely no chance for Halifax. And, well, maybe we are sniffing blood here. We've been very clinical with the chances that have come our way. And another highlight here, and you'd hope it could be a goal in our favour. With half an hour gone... Two goal lead is very, very pretty. A third goal would, well, it would help me relax significantly. We're going to try and apply pressure high up the pitch here. They're trying to build it out from the back. They go long in the end. Fraser wins a good header. Now with Ruiz, who does need to be careful on a booking. Ball through to Daly. He's breaking through options in the middle. Unfortunately, he just couldn't quite get the shot away there. There's a good little block by the Halifax defence. Ball booted wide. Love it. Can you deal with it? Garcia brings it forward to Danto now, who threads through Langua out on the left. Oh my gosh, Connor James, what a stop, you big, big boy. He tips it over the crossbar. Why are all our fans ginger? Answers on a postcard. Danto, oh my gosh, James gets a fingertip save to it. There is a disproportionate number of people with orange hair here. 
Is it dye your hair red day today in Edmonton? Is that is that an official national holiday that I've not been made aware of? Please let me know. They've got a set piece here. Morel whips the ball in back post. Cox, oh my gosh, James. I don't know if he had to make the save there. I think it had actually already gone out of play, but make no mistake, a good stop there, a good strong hand by the keeper. Halifax growing into this game. At the moment, just two very well top quality finishes from our centre midfield is the difference. Marshall tries to dink through Lovitz out on the left. Apare now with it. Plays it inside to Marshall. I enjoy this patient build-up play. I am a little scared of their press, but you can see here Marshall finds Lovett who dinks it in. Bat post daily could get there. It's a tight angle. He hits the woodwork. The ball hacked clear as well. That was a well a half chance. It seemed like an impossible angle to actually find the back of the net, and well the woodwork stood firm. Now we have a set piece to deal with. Soria heads it to Garcia Lawrence. This could be danger. The alarm bells are ringing. Can we get it away? Strafe to Garcia now. Now with Morel. Edge of the box to Lawrence. Look at this. They're just kind of patiently probing away. And I do not like the look of it at all. Langua now with it. Cox. Back to Langua. Can he finish it? The left wing back. He can't. But only by virtue of the fact that Connor James is just an absolute monster in goal for us. I am thinking at half time I might switch to wing backs. I'm thinking I might take off Ruiz who's on a booking. And has been a little bit quiet today. And then drop Lovett deeper as well. Mora with a bit of a naughty foul. I don't think it's going to get booked for that. Indeed, he's not. Maybe one last chance before half-time. Ball whipped in by, uh, well, Shandell Senior. What can he do at the second time of asking? Spreads it to Marshall. Now with Daly. Breaks past his man. Can he finish it? What a goal that is against his former club. Marshall with another assist to add to his collection. Nick Daly, the club captain, the youngster. A player who I feel like has just matured immensely during his time here at the club. And it's the two Jamaican players linking up. You can see a daily just knocks it past his man, tucks it into that bottom corner for his 18th of the season. Could not have asked for a better half. And I feel like off the back of the fact that we are now ahead like we are, maybe it is time to switch to wing backs. We have been clinical for all the times I complain where things don't quite go our way. I feel like today we have got a little bit more of the rub of the green. In terms of what I'm thinking, I'm thinking that we'll change Chung to play on defend and it to play on defend. Ruiz will be the man to make way. And we'll just keep the shape largely the same. I could move Shandell Senior maybe slightly higher up the pitch but then have him on defend. Do I want to do that? He's not really a naturally kind of gifted centre midfielder but I feel like he can do a job for us there. I think this is the changes I want to go with. I'm happy with our team talk. I'm happy with the first half. It's almost impossible not to be. Hopefully now, just switching a little bit more defensively with the wing backs will just give us a little bit more, I guess, in the way of defensive solidity. With Senior not playing the defensive midfielder spot, we are vacating a little bit of space in front of our back three, but they are playing a very flat 4-4-2, so that space shouldn't be too occupied, although they've got a chance here immediately. Danto catching us out in transition. Connor James... To the rescue again. He's heard the rumours that he might not be first choice next year. And he's trying to respond appropriately. Our players are looking calm. I want to get them refocused. Going to get shouty shouty. We want a fourth boys. Shandal Senior with it. Goes to Mora. Chung is out on the right. Goes instead to Marshall. Who will be looking for his hat-trick of assists. Mora back to Marshall. The number 98. A number that he's made his own. Unfortunately, giving the ball away there as he attempts to ping it wide to Lovett. Now Cox maybe to bring ball forward the ball for them. To Danto now. You can see we've got so many men behind the ball. Garcia to Assing. Should I be panicking? Rampasad now with it. Back to Assing who spreads it out onto the left for Morel. We want to keep this clean sheet if we can. It's whipped in Garcia. Oh my gosh. He's cracked it on the volley and the woodwork is still shaking after that thunderous effort at the back post. We've still got one more sub to make. I feel like I might be over the... F oh no, I'm not going to be over the foreign player limit. I'm going to bring on the duck. Hamilton is going to get a rest. Can St. Duck, a player who's missed so much of this season through injury, maybe he can have a late say in this game, although I'm quite content at 3 and up just to hold on for this. They've got a set piece here. They whip it in. Shandell Senior heads it out. Only as far as Sofas. 
ping-ponging around in our area. Let's not concede late here. Garcia, I mean, that late goal could prove pivotal. Akeem Garcia with it. Strafe the defender with the ball into the box. Just didn't really deal with their set piece. You can see we try and get it away a few times, and unfortunately it just keeps coming back at us. And it's a looping header, and for all the saves that Connor James has done, I feel like he might feel a little bit disappointed there to concede so late on. A minute and a quarter left. They are clearly looking for a very late second goal here. Maybe a chance for us to hit them on the break. The duck could be through. The duck is flying in from the wing. Can he finish it? He tries to dink the keeper. I've bigged him up massively. Oxner holds on to it. Oh, it was a golden opportunity to reinstate the free goal lead. Unfortunately, Duck, who has only been on the pitch for a matter of minutes, maybe not quite at the races, kicks it straight into the keeper's hands. Assuming it now finishes 3-1, I'm still going to be very, very happy with this performance, though I can't really fault the players at all, although we give the ball away there to Garcia, Apara, make sure no nonsense. Duck could be through again here. Could he get a second chance? Surely not. He's offside. The linesman denies him any hope there. And 3-1, I will take that after the first leg. That is a good result. It might not be a great one in terms of the late away goal being conceded, but we were very clinical with our opportunities. Marshall, what a performance he's put in for us. I mean, maybe I shouldn't speak too soon here. Can we deal with this? Oh my God, please no. James, hold on to it. We've played 30 seconds too much, ref. Can you blow up, please? Not as in, like, physically blow up. I mean, blow the whistle. He does. 3-1. That is a good performance. Halifax apparently were being backed by Ben Rycroft of Canadian Soccer News as the favourite. So um, that is a good little underdog win. And it gives us some real reason for optimism going into the second leg to hopefully keep things going. Marshall, man of the match, turns up in the big games when it really matters. I mean, look at it. He, he relishes the big matches. He's a consistent performer. He has that element of flair. We saw that today, and hopefully we'll see it in the second leg. Anyway, let's get forward to that. It's going to be away from home. It's going to be a tricky trip over to the east coast of Canada against Halifax. A 3-1 lead, though, puts us in a commanding position. Let's see how we get on. Okay, guys, so we're back here for the second leg against Halifax, and we have a bit of a dilemma. We have two players who I didn't realise were going to be suspended due to yellow card accumulations. The first is unfortunately Carlos Mora, the young centre mid, is not going to be available for selection. And also, Nick Daly. So really, two of our big players missing today is going to be, well, potentially game-influencing. In terms of their replacements, we are going to bring in Kevin Deshays to play centre mid on support. It's a role that he can do okayly. He's not the best defensively, but he's certainly capable, I feel like, of playing this role. Of course, you might remember he did get injured. I think last episode he's back now, raring to go. And up top, Duck is going to have to start. We'll drop Hamilton into the pressing forward role. Always sign Jordan here with the intention of him being a player who was quite versatile and could slot in in the absence of Daly or Duck in the striking department. It does mean there is big pressure on the Duck today. Hopefully he can find the back of the net and be pivotal for us. At the back, due to the foreign player limit... And, uh, well, Mora and also Daly not being in the team. It means an opportunity for Solomon to come onto the bench. Very, very good player, the 27-year-old. Signed him for the first team. He's ready to play. To be fair, this year he's made a decent number of appearances. 17 he's made in the league. A 7.2 on average rating as well. Nothing to be scoffed at whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, he is going to be playing alongside Soria and Fraser in our back three. But anyway, those three changes are the only ones. It does mean that Apare is on the bench. Elsewhere on the bench, Sarkaria comes in as our kind of plan B striker. Um, he's not had a good season by his incredibly high standards. You know, the previous two years, he really did light the world alight. This year, he has had 11 starts. It's, like, it's not like he hasn't been starting games. He has been. Compared to previous years, he's just not been on that same level. But anyway, we go into this game with a 3-1 lead. I'm hopeful that we can keep things going. I want to stick it out and play our regular 3-1-4-2 oh well, system rather than playing with wing-backs. That could prove to be a dumb mistake, but we played so well in the last leg. It's really now a case of can players like Saint Duck, who's going to start today in Deshays, the youngster, can they step up and fill the void of the likes of Daly and Mora, players who... Undeniably, we've become reliant on this year. They have been pivotal parts of our team. 
we will now hope for our own sakes um, that in their absence we are still able to perform well. An early goal for us would be very, very nice. Um, I say this, Cox is clean through immediately. Connor James, Connor James, Connor. So make a statue for him. He's keeping us in this game. Great click opportunity for Halifax immediately. Does not bode well. James collects the cross as well. Oh, that is not the start I wanted to see in terms of them breaking clean through. And they're on the attack again here. Gutierrez, big throw in. It's headed away. Secunda to Ferrari. Crosses it to the back post. Morel, acres of space, gives it to Langua. It's gone over the crossbar just. We're on the back foot here. I'm actually considering switching to the wing back system this early on. Is that crazy? Maybe a little bit, but... Yeah, they're causing us issues in the wide areas with this overload that they're doing. I'm going to make the change now. In terms of what we do, um, the right wing back position is the position of concern. We're also without a natural... Well, I guess we played ball in the midfield in Deshaies. I think Ruiz is going to have to play right back for us. Just thinking about how I want to set up our midfield. I think Ruiz... You've never played this position in your life. This is your moment with your four marking to show us what you can do. Anyway, tactical change hasn't been happen uh, hasn't happened yet, and there is a chance. Maybe could be the pointless highlight. Probably is, but yeah, we're going to go more conservative in terms of our defensive shape in the wide areas. I'm hoping that the wing backs tucking in a little deeper will help us with the overlap because that is clearly something. Halifax want to exploit. They've seen pretty good success with it early on here. And while Gutierrez this time cutting inside puts it to Langway, you can see now Ruiz slotting into position as that kind of defensively minded fullback option as, oh my, how has that gone in? Why has Connor James not tried to get to it? It is 3 3 on aggregate. The lead that we had has vanished. And it has vanished very, very quickly. I'm getting a horrible sense of deja vu. Not like this. Not like this. Look at that. It's Could James have got to it? Did he think it was going wide? I don't know. The spin of the ball takes it into the back of the net. Halifax, two clear cut chances, two goals. They're on the attack again. Please make it stop. Fraser to Cox, who hits it, who hits the woodwork. Oh, my. I don't even feel like the wingback system is working. I just wonder if there's a better way to approach this, maybe. We've had a 4-2-3-1 in our back pocket this whole season. Well, since since I came to the club, this has existed as an option. The only issue we have is we don't really have anyone who can play right back. No, we, we really don't have anyone who can play right back. Um, Soria can play left back, so maybe he's the option to play right back, although he's not really got the physicals. I think Fraser's probably our best option here. Am I panicking? Maybe a little bit. Am I right to be panicking? Yes. <laughs> um, hmm. Kind of going into uncharted territory here. Do I really want to go through with this? Saria's had an awful game to start. I know this is mental to be making th these kind of changes this soon. But I feel really uncomfortable the way things are going right now. We're going to go to a 4-2-3-1. We're going to abandon the free at the back system. I think for one of the first times here, we are ditching it. Immediately we have a highlight. Whipped in back post. Oh my gosh, can we get it in? We can't. It was scooped off the line. I think it was Solomon with the back post header. May have even hit the woodwork. It's going to be interesting to see how Hamilton and Ruiz do in the wide areas for us in this system. Marshall going to be playing his natural system as well. Or rather his natural position as well. And speaking of the devil, he's got the ball, he hits the woodwork. Duck is there for the rebound. We needed that. Marshall, with that initial effort, Duck tucks it home. 4 3 on aggregate. Kareem Moses on off the bench to play right back. May well be his last game ever for the club. A player really hasn't appeared much for us this year, but he is our option in the right back department on the bench. And it's looking like a wise change. You can see in the build-up play here, there wasn't an offside from this effort. I don't know why it was showing the offside line there because that wasn't the final ball. Deshays, what can you do, my friend? He floats it back post to Oxen and uh, collects. You can see they've got so many players spreading wide. That really is how they like to play. 
Halifax. They love to spread us wide. And maybe a four at the back system is just the best way to deal with it. Maybe I need to cave. Maybe I need to reconsider. I've learned from last year's mistakes where in this situation we went to wing backs and it didn't work. And while we're on the attack here, Deshays tucks it wide to love it. Options in the middle, whips in. St. Duck's there! He's been out for so much of this season through injury. He missed some chances at the end of the last game. A quick fire double for the Duck. Two half chances, which he's really clinically taken away for, for, for us. Sees us back in control of the tie. Lovitz crosses it in on the volley. Drills it right into the bottom corner. Just as a reminder, eight finishing. Eight. It's a disgrace. He might be inconsistent. He might not be Mr. Reliable. But today, he is our hero. As things stand, we would be winning 5-3 on aggregate. Season 1, we won 6-5. Season 2, they won 5-4. Season 3... The head-to-head -head between ourselves and Halifax, it's 5-3. It's, it's living up to the billing, isn't it? I'm not happy with the performance out there. Lovitz is looking stressed. Calm. Um, I'm happy with your performance. Look at how he's happy. I'm a little. I'm a man manager. Sometimes you've got to talk to players on an individual basis. Ruiz and Hamilton haven't had the best games in the wide areas, but I do feel bad for them because... We've not played with attacking wide midfielders on the left or right wing ever during our time here. I think I'm safe in saying maybe we had it once or twice during season one. Or you might remember we had that 4-2-2 system or 4-2-2-2 or 4-2-4. However you'd like to phrase it. Love it, whips in. Ruiz hits it. That's what I want to see. I talked about the fact he's a big earner who maybe hasn't turned up for the big occasions He's got a goal here in the final. Love it with another assist out on the left-hand side. Hamilton involved in the build-up play. Passes it back to his partner in crime. Love it, dinks in and Ruiz. What a finish that is on his left peg. Superb goal for him. Hamilton's not had the best game out on the left. I'm going to bring in Telfer for him. The Shays at box-to-box -box midfielder hasn't played great. You know what? We'll bring in Norman as well. We've turned this tie around. We were two goals down. We switched to a system we've never really planned for. This is like in the movie, you know, where the heroes have like a plan that they've never fully tested and it just works and it's working again. Duck has a hat trick when it really matters. Every duck has his day and today is duck day. He's had a quacking good performance. Oh gosh, let's just stop. Let's just stop. Oh, it's another volley. It's another superb goal. It's making me feel all kinds of feelings. Marshall with the assist as well. Imagine if Duck had been fit for most of the season. Imagine what could have been. 20 minutes left. We have been superb in this match. Don't think there's really any other word to use. I do wonder to what extent Halifax have been completely caught out tactically by our change in system. Because this isn't a system we've shown before. This is not a card we've kind of given any hint as to having in our hand. And we've played it here on the big stage and it's just worked for us. It is a variant of our Leon tactic. You can see the 4-2-3-1 the direct. And well, it's just worked, hasn't it, here? That looks like a foul by Cox. Indeed it is. I want to demand more from the players. I want Duck to get four. Our record for goals in a single match is Nick Daly's four, though, which I believe he got last season. They are on the attack here. I mean, they have got one back. It's now 7-4. Should I be worried? Probably not with 17 minutes left. I don't want to watch the highlight. I am getting a little anxious about it. That ball whipped in from the left-hand side. Fortunately... Due to the lead we established in the first leg and just a tremendous turnaround here within the space of 20 minutes, really, or within the space of 30 minutes, you can see between Duck's first and third goal, we have turned things around. We're back, baby. We're going to be back in continental football next year. We absolutely deserve it. I feel like we have been the best team for the last few years in the Canadian Premier League. We were so unfortunate at the end of last year. This game... Maybe we've not been the best team on the night, but Duck was clinical. We took the chances that came our way. 4-3 on the night, 7-4 on aggregate. I mean, there's one thing you are guaranteed when ourselves and Halifax meet in these matches, and it is goals. Connor James put in a really good performance despite 
the fact he did concede three, he still got a 7.2. Kind of gives you an idea of just how many saves he was making for us. We're going to qualify for Canadian football. We win the Canadian Premier League. The space enters the Hall of Fame for Canada. That's what I like to see. The minimum expectation was to win the Premier League. We have done that. The Duck Stars. I'm so happy for him. He's been so unfortunate with injuries this year. I'm really hoping he can put them behind him now. Between the sprained ankle ligaments and then the torn hamstring back in July that left him out for two months. He's missed so much of this season. Hopefully he can have a good off-season, perform well. You can see here we get £240,000 for our league position. Our overall balance, the prize money hasn't been added there, but that's still not looking particularly good. If I'm not mistaken, quite a lot of that prize money will be given as bonuses to the players as well. Anyway, we can have a quick look at the end of season rundown. In terms of the overall best 11, here it is as things stand right now. It's kind of interesting. It's a blend of the new and the old. You look at players like Tenguio who left us for Forge, you can see really hasn't performed since he's gone to them. Elsewhere in the team, players like Sarkaria, has he played his last game for us? I do worry that off the back of this year, I might have to let him go. Lincoln Joseph obviously made that move over to York 9. He had an okay season, a 6.85 average rating. I guess by his own standards is relatively poor. It seems to be a common trend that when we've moved players on, they've never performed as well for the teams they've gone to as they did when they played for us. But yeah, you can see on the subs as well, Kevin Williams, Apare, Alex Williams, Mortotzi. How have you done, Mortotzi? Another one of our players at Forge, a 6.66 average rating for him. Speaking of the devil, <laughs> okay, I don't know where that pun's going, so we'll end it there. Carl Walton, one year left on his contract. He's probably going to go, unfortunately. Hasn't played for us, isn't happy. It's kind of to be expected. You can see here we have the end of season awards. Fans player of the year was really split, but Alex Marshall did get it. Fair play to him. Did really come big for us. Eight assists in the league. Um, just a top draw player really for us. It's a shame that we've only really been playing in the league. In terms of our best 11, here it is. Kind of interesting that Ruiz does not feature at right midfielder, despite being the signing of the season. Between him and Edwidi Bonsu, there was quite a lot of rotation. You can see... I don't know, Randy here, he didn't play that many games. And when he did, he didn't perform particularly well. But um, he still managed to get in the team of the year. Alex Marshall got player of the season. Hamilton got goal of the season. Let's have a look at it. I don't remember. Is this the volley at the back post? I don't remember this goal. Let's have a look at it. Ruiz out on the right, crosses it in. Hamilton's there. I mean... I feel like we had better goals than that, so not sure how to feel about that. In terms of our end of season review, we were expected to make much of the Canadian Premier League title running and we lived up to the billing. Moments forget was the 3-0 defeat against Halifax. Um, we used 28 team uh, players in the league. Apparently that was second of eight in the division, which is interesting because there's only seven teams in the league. Football manager, you are very, very drunk. You can see here, everyone loves me, kind of to be expected. Um, the hierarchy is an interesting one because a lot of the players at the top of the hierarchy are players who, I don't want to say they're not really part of the first team anymore, but I look at players like Moses, Amiobi, Sarkaria, they are three players who might not be here next year. You can see Amiobi has just fallen off a cliff when it comes to his physicals. If we just compare his physicals to when we started here, you can see pace has gone down by three, stamina down by two, acceleration down by two. It's tumbling. It is a tiny bit of a concern, but it's kind of a bit to be expected with age. Similar story, I would assume, for Moses here. We just compare him, yeah, you can see he has declined significantly as a player. And these are two players who are in their early 30s. It's kind of to be expected. I'm kind of scared for what might become of Soria, because I feel like he's on the cusp of it. He's got one year left on his current deal. It'll be a bit of a battle uh, emotionally, you know, as to whether or not we renew that. At the same time, though, you've got players like Connor James, who's still very much part of the first team, of obviously Nick Daly, who has become club captain, just a bit of a fan favourite as well, doing really, really well for us. If we just look here at the general stuff, you can see uh, ourselves and Alex Marshall in favourite personnel. San Korea, interestingly, considered a legend at the club. <laughs> Interesting to see for sure. I do wonder how many more years of battling Halifax it will take for them to be established as one of our big rivals. End of season meeting, 
We're going to do it again next year, boys. You know what I'm expecting. We are going to win the league again and again and again. I want us to build up the profile of this country. I want us to get to the North American Champions League next year if we can. That's the challenge. Anyway, of course, we've now got the, the long six-month wait until the, uh, the, the season starts again. It's always a bit interesting. I imagine there'll be a little bit in the way of transfer business to do, but... We can think about that in just a second. You can see Daly picks up MVP, Alex Marshall runner-up, Ruiz coming up third. I think it's really good to see three players who take up our import slots in these kind of awards just because it justifies the fact that they are the players in those positions. Daly picks up Golden Boot winner with 18 goals to his name. St. Duck won under-21 player of the year despite only playing nine games for us. He scored eight goals in nine, a 7.49 average rating. You have to wonder what might have been if he'd been fit all year. We got manager of the year with a 70% win ratio. And in the team of the year, it was, well, you can see here, it was ourselves in Halifax sharing the spoils. Interesting to see Solomon in the team. When he played, he played very, very well for us. Mora and Marshall, not entirely surprising. Obviously, Daly and Ruiz in there as well. Soria, still showing that he's a massive part of our team. An unsung hero, really, um, in the centre-back position. And Connor James in goal is really good to see as well. Lovitz and Chandel Senior were amongst the subs. You can see the subs here. Roberts, who is uh, Forge's goalkeeper, was the only non-Halifax or non-Edmonton player to feature in the uh, the countdown there of the best players you can see this is the overall table so we did finish in the end eight points ahead of Halifax a long long way of the teams behind us poor Pacific FC I don't know how they're ever going to get off the foot of the table the way things are going they've been struggling year on year if we just look at the autumn season you can see we did actually finish runners up to Halifax in the end due to our late league form um wouldn't have made a big difference because they were still second in the overall table. But yeah, just worth noting that like, the fact they did actually win the autumn season in the end. So we didn't really do the clean sweep, so to say. But still, very, very good news. We are going places. I've just had the news item in the bottom right. We have a new stadium on the way. I'm a little bit concerned what a new stadium might mean for our finances. We're about to find out. Um, contracts expiring at the end of the year. Are there any here that I really want to renew? We could apparently re renew Sarox, but I don't think I'm that keen to. Moses, apparently he's just not good enough. Begovic, we could maybe offer a new contract to to be a backup keeper. He's happy to be a hot prospect. You know what? We'll give him a new deal. Um, team of the Year bonuses awarded out here. Decreased the percentage of transfer revenue retained to 15%. So the board clearly got one eye on the finances. What is the stadium move going to be? Let's find out. We're paying for the Edmonton Stadium. It's going to cost £12 million. We've secured a loan of £12 million. We've also got a stadium sponsorship. It's going to be completed. When's it going to be completed? In a year and a half's time? Basically, one whole season. We'll have to see what the terms of those loans are. Because we might be paying a little bit of money back. Let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the, the loan. So we are going to be paying back £100,000 a month. So that's going to be an expensive loan for us. Um, we are going to be starting to turn into a selling club potentially, which is fine. Um, sponsorships weren't that great. I'm hoping that a good run in the continental competitions can help out with our finances, to be honest. That will be the big challenge for us. Board initial budgets, bit of transfer money, bit of wage money as well. The thing to note with Football Manager and the finances is um, that the game is always designed in a way where clubs can't go into administration. It's just not possible. As long as you stick within your budget that you're set, it's kind of not really your problem. That is the board, at the end of the day, not correctly um, budgeting things around. And it's something that we are going to have to be wary of. As I mentioned, the fact that now we are going to be paying £900,000 a year means that we are going to be making about another million pound loss every season for the foreseeable future. Obviously, once the stadium's built, that's going to help us massively cover those costs. Let's just have a look. How big is the stadium? I didn't even pay attention to it. It is going to hold 10,900, so that's massive. The gate receipts are going to help a hell of a lot, um, even if we are paying across 10%, because right now, if we just look at our income for the season... Um, 
uh, season ticket and gate receipts came to a hundred and uh, well one point four million. We're basically doubling the capacity with the expansion, so we're going to be getting another seven hundred thousand pounds a year once the stadium's built, assuming we can sell it out, which I guess in itself is going to be a challenge. But um, yeah, financially, once the stadium's built, we shouldn't be in too big of a t problem as long as we continue to play attractive football and continue to bring in players and you know the fans, obviously. So I guess the question is, what is the plan for the off season? What do we do here? And it's, I don't want to say it too loudly because it does hurt a little bit to say, but I feel like this is going to be the end of the FC Edmonton of old. We're going to be entering season four here. Players like Edwini Bonsu, Sarkaria, Amiobi, I just don't see a spot for them in the team. Even someone like Osorio, I don't know where he fits into the team really. A player who I will probably look to let go. Hopefully we can get a good little offer for him. Um, obviously these are players who have been here since we first came to the club of course in the case of Osorio who was one of our first signings someone like Lamotte as well a good player but when you look at the likes of Alex Marshall Deshaies you know these guys all play the same position it's such a competitive position Lamotte this year just hasn't played for us can't keep him in the team if he's not playing of course the good news is for players like Bogdanovic and Mosovat they are considered, well, under the age of 18, of course. So we're not going to have to register them. So they are players who I'm hoping we can slowly bed into the first team now. The team itself is in a very, very good position, of course. We're still at the foreign player limit, so unless we were to sell players, we can't really add any new foreign players. I feel like when we did all our transfer business last year, we kind of knew that we were going to be making some signings and then kind of sitting on our current squad for a couple of years without major changes. Someone like Shandell Senior, worth noting, um, he only has 261 days left until he's not foreign anymore. That will be in the summer of next season. So halfway through the year, we could potentially add in a foreign player. And for players like, obviously, St. Duck and Daly, who joined us, um, you know, two years ago now, we're in a position where, uh, eligibility-wise, if I'm not mistaken, you know, they're going to be pretty close to being Canadian citizens soon, which is... You know, good news if we just look... Is it nationalities? If we just look here? I don't know why it's not showing the Canadian nationality countdown for St. Duck. Um, but no, for, for other players, I'm trying to think of examples. Like Daly, probably a good example. He will be considered Canadian kind of in a season's time. Um, apparently he's thinking he deserves a new contract. That's annoying. I am happy that the players are very much on my side about the Ruiz situation. I feel like that's going to be the big saga of this offseason. Can we keep hold of Ruiz? Or is a big team going to come in with an unrejectable offer? You know, if a team came in with a bid of £2 million, I probably have to take it, to be fair. He's been very good on the right. Would he be difficult to replace? Yes. Is he our star player? One of them, for sure. He has also got a long time left on his current deal. I don't know if we have to let him go. In terms of the team as a whole, though, I'm very, very happy with it. Um, if we do make signings, I think there'll be similar signings to the, some of the ones that we made during the year this year and kind of throughout this year. I'm talking about players like Jordan Hamilton, players who are Canadian players who perhaps featured in MLS and fallen through the cracks. We want to be hoovering them up and making sure that we're the team, I guess, signing them up. And we have got now a bit of a reputation for signing Toronto players like Liam Fraser, like Daniel Lovitz, um, like Jordan Hamilton, players who... A deemed surplus to requirements and giving them that second shot at football here in Canada and that's something that I think we have to absolutely continue to do um, but yeah I think there is going to be a bit of a culling where we do have to cut off some players that you know sentimentally I might not want to let go I'm looking at the likes of Kareem Moses, Osorio um, obviously I've talked about the striking situation as well I feel like with Hamilton, Duck and Daly we have three very good forwards of course waiting in the wings we have good players here. Uh, Karata is probably the player who I will use to register in the summer with Shandell Senior's free spot. Um, of course, young Japanese player. He's already halfway towards being Canadian as well, so he wouldn't even be a foreign player for too long. We do have other players who have developed really nicely. Players like Danny Esteban, who um, we signed this year from Sigma FC. He's looked very good in the striking department. Obviously, Atardo we could bring back into the team. He's developed well. 
Um, there were other players like Diallo who, to be fair, he went out on loan this year to Valor and didn't play very well for them. Three goals in 22. I'm glad that they're paying all his wages, put it that way. I think actually Vim here might be a really good shout for a player worth bringing into the first team next year. We won't have to register him either next year, so it's a free player spot. He's a player who I really think could make a name for himself. Also, Oyamada, I've probably got to bring back at the end of his loan and consider putting him in the first team. Um, you might remember he had that clause in his contract where his wages were going to go up when he played league games. We have negotiated that out, so that's good news there. It does mean that next year he could be a player who features fairly frequently. Maybe he is the Kareem Moses replacement. In some ways, I feel like we've actually got replacements already in the team that I just need to give chances to rather than signing in new players. Um, obviously, our under-21s is kind of big. I would like to kind of squeeze it down a little bit in size. Um, we've got plenty of players you can see here with contracts expiring. In the next few years, of course, the green players are players who are part of our youth intake who are not going to keep on. Um, there's some players here who I probably do need to renew the contracts of who have contracts expiring in the next couple of years. But um, I don't feel like it's that impossible a, a situation, I guess, for us to slim down our youth team just a little bit over the next couple of years, just so we can have a bit more of a streamlined setup. In terms of top performers this year, though, Nick Daly leading the way. Not entirely surprising there. Duck, of course, with that late hat trick, overtook Mora to be second choice goal scorer or second top goal scorer. Mora here, what a player he's turned out to be. I absolutely love this guy. Top, top draw player, just captain consistent. Um, yeah, 7.28 average rating. We knew he was going to be a good player based on his performances for River Plate at a very young age, but yeah, he's surpassed even my wildest expectations of him. In terms of assists, they were really largely shared around. Lovitz and Ruiz definitely chipped in with their fair share. Daly, as well as scoring, was a good provider. Marshall, I just have a soft spot for this guy. The fans love him, which obviously really, really helps us. Um, I feel like he really makes the team tick in the centre, and he's a player who I'm desperately keen to keep hold of. Um, his current contract runs out in a couple of years' time, so maybe a player will look to renew over the course of the off-season. But um, no, I think that's all really here for this year. We're in a good position. Very, very happy with where we find ourselves at. Um, I have been keeping a close eye to see if the Canadian national team manager's job might come available. John Herdman, at least for the moment, doesn't seem too keen to move. You can see here, just looking at the national team setup, still no Canadian Premier League ref rep representatives there. Um, Jordi Hakkinen is the standout regen who is currently in the first team, although he's not actually made an appearance for them just yet. If we look at the under-20 setup, I could probably do with rescouting this. But um, there is a decent chunk of players who play for us, which is nice to see. Pacific FC, of course, have our player Prince Amanda and York 9 have Atado out on loan. They both feature in this team as well. It's going to be an, an interesting time, I feel like, over the next couple of seasons to hopefully see some of these players slowly force their way into the main national team. And of course, if we can go and be a little bit more successful continentally than we were in our first attempt last season, I'm hoping that the Canadian Premier League reputation will start to rise. You can see right now it's just hovered in ninth place for back-to-back -back years. I want to see us going onwards and upwards. And off the back of that, hopefully the other teams competing in the league will, of course, benefit. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. Thank you for watching, as always. I do hope you've enjoyed Season 3. It's been a shorter one in terms of the episodes, but I have no doubt that um, in the coming years, you know, hopefully with more to fight for on multiple points, we'll have some big, big games in the continental competitions to enjoy. And, uh, well, hopefully, of course, I will see them, uh, see you for them. If you have enjoyed today's video, do drop a like on it. Let me know who your favourite player is of the series so far. And, well, other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.